Hi guys and welcome to week four. I thought I'd do this week's video as a screencast because there are a few things around the site that I have changed and I want to point out those changes to you. So let's start with that and then we'll move on to talking about what's happening this week. So the first thing I've changed on the site is the arrangement of the home page. So by about this time in the semester, I find students have worked out where um, the most important information is. And so I no longer need to feature that all the important stuff at the top of the page. So I've moved that to the bottom and instead pulled the other columns up to the top. You can still see all the information related to your blogs in the left hand column, but you'll notice I've also now added the global site tags feed. So you can see um, who else has used those tags and you can just click on um, one of them and you will be able to get to all the posts that have been written with that tag. So you can see what other students are doing with those reflections. In the center column, you'll still see information about the teaching team blog, including how to subscribe, the latest posts and recent comments on those. Over the right hand side, I have made the featured post sit here. Um, so you can see at the moment, we've still got that one of Williams up. Uh, that will probably change in the next few days as we give feedback on your first posts. In the class last week, we talked about implementing forums as a structured question and answer space. I've gone ahead and turned the forums on and I've added a feed in the right hand column here. So once you start posting in the forums, you'll see the latest posts and replies in that right hand column. A couple of other things that have changed in the navigation, you'll notice it has expanded. Um, I had many questions last week about what people were supposed to do for the weekly learning activity. Um, and I was a bit concerned about that. So what I've done is added another navigation item under which you'll find um, progressively through the semester, I'll be adding all of the learning activities. So when it comes towards the due dates and you're looking to um, work out exactly what you need to submit, you can go directly to the activity page for the weeks in question and um, see what needs to happen there. I've also added another link to the navigation. It is this critical reflection one here. Now the critical reflection one is a bunch of resources related to reflective writing. Um, there's a what is reflective writing one um, that includes some tips for getting started, how to write HD worthy critical reflection posts, getting behind, behind the surface higher order thinking, unpacking the critical reflection criteria and a workflow for reflective writing. I'd encourage you to have a look at in particular the getting beyond the surface higher order thinking one. Um, this is something I didn't run through in class last week, but it introduces you to Bloom's taxonomy um, and tells you, uh, gives you some prompts around the kinds of questions you might ask yourself um, of the, the topics that you're working with in order to really critically analyze them. So we want to make sure that you're going beyond the descriptive and um, into that analysis in your, in your posts. The other one that I didn't really talk about in class is unpacking the critical reflection criteria. This is a useful post because in this particular article, I go through and pull out the pieces from the criteria and explain in more detail what they actually mean. So that's worth um, giving that a look as well. Okay, so let's move on to the week four page and I'll talk you through what's happening this week. So the intro video isn't up, of course, because I'm filming it right now, um, but let's have a look at the upcoming due dates. So this week you need to put up your week three reflect activity. And if you plan on completing the play or share activities this week, you need to do that by, oh, sorry, for week three, you need to do that by Sunday as well. Now there are no due dates next week um, because next week is the mid-semester break. So that means this week's activities aren't due until week five, um, which gives you three weeks to work on them instead of two. Uh, you'll notice there, there is one other, other task for this week, and that is to complete the social media use survey. Um, and you can do that by clicking the complete the survey link over in the right hand column. This is just to give us some insight into how the class uses social media and to give us some data to talk about in later weeks. 
There is no class this week, but that doesn't mean that you don't have a lot to do. Um, because we're not having a class this week, I have posted um, some videos for you that I've made introducing you to some of the content that you'll be looking at this week. This week we have two topics, information experience and social media, and the second one is infographics. The infographics topic in particular is going to help you with assignment two because the principles related to creating and designing infographics um, relate also to your persona poster. Your persona poster won't be a typical persona, it'll have many of the same elements of, as a UX persona but it is more of a poster um, so there is more space and you can include more in it. So let's have a look at this week's first topic, information experience in social media. Okay, so as usual, I have summarized the resources at the top of the page. So there are four things that you need to read related to this topic. The first of those is this page. So this page is like an article in which I have um, written some content that introduces you to the concept of information experience and particularly information experience in social media. So read through that content. Um, in that content I have linked to other articles and I'm, I have also pulled those links out for you and put them up the top here in the essential resource list. If you are short on time this week please prioritise reading this page and the Dana Boyd article Streams of Content Limited Attention. Um, that is a really important article and will be useful to you in the future. Um, the Beyond Broadcasting article is also very short. So that's the first topic for the week and this is the topic that you'll be reflecting about in your critical reflections. Okay, so on to the second topic which is infographics. So you'll see here that there is also an essential resource list at the top of the page. Um, there are two things you need to do. The first is read this page which again is an article introducing you to the topic and also providing you lots of helpful links that you can use um, to help you create your persona poster for assignment two. I've embedded a video playlist. You'll see that here. The first one is a video called Information is Visual, which I've made for you. The second one is a short video. It runs for about four minutes. Um, it's a video data visualization by Hans Rosling, and it's really great. The third one is a video uh, called DIY Infographics, which is where I am um, suggesting to you a process and places to go to get images for creating infographics. So that will be really helpful for assignment two. There will be a fourth video in that playlist, it's currently uploading, and that video is not essential viewing, it's there if you are interested in the idea of visual thinking, which I touch on in the first video. Um, I did want to talk about some particular visual thinking tools, but in the interest of um, making the video shorter, I've pulled that content out and put it into that fourth video, um, which you are very welcome to watch if you're interested, otherwise don't worry. If you scroll right to the bottom of the page, you'll also see that I have um, I have a, a heading there that is want more. And under that, you'll see I've curated a whole bunch of resources related to infographics, visualization, and information design. These aren't essential readings. They're just here in case you're really interested in any of this and want to pursue it further. So we will be working through your week two blog posts this week and giving you some feedback. And as we do that, we'll also be making notes to write a general feedback document. Um, we're really looking forward to getting stuck into that and reading all of your posts. Don't forget that you guys also need to be reading and commenting on each other's posts so that you are um, fulfilling the requirements of the connect component of assignment um, one. Two, assignment two. So please um, do jump in and make sure that you are reading people's posts and commenting on them as well. Now that we have the forums here on the unit site, I'd like to request that if you have a question for us, you post it there in the forums rather than in the activity feed. So we will be monitoring actively the forums and your blogs um, rather than the activity feed. So make sure if you wanna get our attention, that your post um, or your question goes into the forums. Finally, I just wanted to mention that um, you are all aware, of course, that you had your first blog post due date last night. 
I just want to advise you that we are not tracking your post and we are not going to be in touch with you if you've missed one. So it's up to you to make sure you have this stuff on your calendar and you know when it's due. If you have any concerns about that, just head to the schedule, um, which you can print out and then you will um, be able to note down when things are due and know exactly what's going on. Um, so it is important that you're on top of when those activities are due so that you get them in on time because of course we have to enforce the late penalty and you'll get a, de a deduction of 6.6 .6 marks for any um, reflect post that is late or not submitted. So please make sure that you um, keep on top of that as well. Don't forget, although we don't have a class this week, you do have work to do and there is probably um, two hours worth of content in the infographics section and you also have to make sure you spend enough time on the information experience stuff too. So remember, no class doesn't mean week off. You really do need to make sure that you're working through the material that we've provided for you online. Okay, that is it for this week. Have a great week and if you have any questions at all, please post them in the forums and we will get back to you as soon as we can.